Do you have $2,500 for a 17 inch pen display? No? Good, cause neither do I. For a long time, Wacom has been the industry leader when it comes to pen displays and tablets and for a good reason. They're high quality, well constructed, and for the most part have been the most innovative. But that's all starting to change because rival companies are now creating pen displays and tablets that are on par with, you know, the same specs and drawing quality, but for half the price or sometimes even less. I wanted to make a video for anyone who, like me, may have thought that if you didn't have a Wacom, it just wasn't going to be good enough. But I have good news because that's no longer the case. Here is why you don't need a Wacom pen display. Alright, before I get burned at the stake or hurled into a black hole for expressing my opinions on the internet, let me just preface all of this by saying I don't think Wacom is some terrible company that's stealing everyone's money, and I don't think that every single product that they sell is incredibly overpriced. I think it's been at the top for so long for a reason. I've personally used a Wacom Cintiq 16 and enjoyed it. But that doesn't mean that we, as artists, can't critically look at the way they price and sell their pen displays and compare them to other smaller companies who seem to be thriving in a much more consumer-friendly market. And I just wanted to add as a friendly little reminder that I am not a professional animator or illustrator and I don't have experience working in a studio with other artists. These thoughts are all my own that I've cultivated over my own art journey through the years so please take everything I say with a grain of salt and I hope you can realize what angle I'm coming from here as an independent artist who just wants to show other artists that there are affordable and high quality alternatives to Wacom pen displays. So recently, Wacom rolled out their newest 17 inch and 22 inch displays, the Wacom Cintiq Pro 17 and 22. While they do have all the top of the line specs like 4K, 120Hz displays with touchscreen capability and can display up to 1.07 billion colors at a whopping price tag of $2,500 and $3,000 respectively, it begs the question, who are these really for? Let's be honest, you're probably not going to see these outside of a professional studio or the occasional pro who's lucky enough to have one in their home studio. Even at the cheaper end of the spectrum, the Wacom Cintiq 16, the non-pro model from 2019 that still requires a 3-in-1 cable HDMI connection, doesn't come with additional accessories outside of the cables and pen, and only offers HD 1080 by 1920 resolution and 99% sRGB color coverage is currently $800. To put that into perspective for you, the new XP Pen Artist Pro 16 second generation display that's coming out this year provides a 2560 by 1600 resolution display, all-in-one USB-C connection, 99% sRGB and Adobe RGB 94% color coverage, and a wireless remote control that goes along with it to boot, is going to release for around $600, but is actually even on sale for the pre-order right now at about $500. And that's a completely new model that hasn't even been released yet. The fact that a fairly outdated Wacom display from 2019 is still going for $300 more than essentially its competitors' top-end products show you how much things have changed over the years. Brands like Huion and XP Pen also have alternatives that are similar or slightly lower specs for as low as $300 to $400, like Huion's 2021 Canvas 16 model and XP Pen's Artist 15.6 Pro. Like I said before, the goal of this video is not to trash talk Wacom or its pen displays, but rather help spread the word to artists that there are more and more consumer friendly and viable options popping up from other companies and it's worth giving them a shot. In the past, it felt harder to recommend other brands because the quality of Wacom really was leaps and bounds above everyone else. But luckily, that's not the case anymore. I own a Wacom Cintiq 16, an XP Pen Artist 22 second generation, and a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and I can confidently and objectively say that I enjoy working on the iPad and the XP Pen over the Wacom. This doesn't mean that every Huion and XP Pen display is going to be better than its Wacom counterpart, but it does mean that there are real alternatives nowadays. 
XP Pen drivers are just as good as Wacom's, and installation and setup was actually easier for my XP Pen, especially thanks to the simple USB C connection I get from it. Drawing on the XP Pen feels great, with low latency and parallax to the point that I don't notice any difference when switching back and forth from the incredibly smooth drawing experience on my iPad Pro which I would say is better than any Wacom I've tried. While I don't have personal experience with Huion, I've heard great things about them and they seem to be the other main competitor alongside XP Pen that are giving Wacom a run for their money. And while there are even more companies and brands that are coming up like Sense Labs, I have the most experience and I've done the most research on brands like XP Pen, Huion, and Apple's iPads. So I'll keep my examples and recommendations restricted to those for this video. I encourage you to do your own research, try out demo setups inside stores that you may be able to actually physically go to, and always remember to try and get the best value out of what your own budget can afford. With that being said, I do have a few recommendations for those who may be wondering which pen displays I would suggest for anyone who doesn't want to buy a Wacom. My first and foremost suggestion is going to be XP Pen. This company has been innovating and improving so much over the years that it's really only a matter of time before they are on par with Wacom in every way. And if they're able to continue pricing things like they can now, Wacom will be in big trouble. This could seem a bit biased, but I also just like the way XP Pen presents themselves as a company. They're centered and focused around independent artists who need affordable pen displays and tablets, but also offer higher end options for those who are able to save up a little more. Everything from their brand design, their website, the little add-ons and extra miles they go for their products and customers, it all adds up into something I've come to really enjoy. And on top of all that, I honestly just enjoy using my XP pen display. I'm in no way affiliated with them or sponsored by them, so know that what I'm saying in this video is purely my own views. The Artist 22 second generation display that I have is great for anyone looking for a larger screen and something that can be mounted easily with the VESA monitor arm setup. There are also even more budget friendly options in the 12, 13, and 16 inch categories with updated specs and the all-in-one USB-C connectivity. Huion is the other company that I would say seems to be doing just about the same as XP Pen and offers from what I can see and have heard equally high quality displays at affordable prices. There are tons of amazing people on YouTube who do reviews of all these tablets and displays so I recommend checking some of them out if you want to get your feet wet and see what stands out to you. One last recommendation I do have, for those that can afford the higher end of you know $1,000 to $2,000 is the iPad Pro. Like I said before, the drawing experience and touch functions of the iPad Pro really can't be beat for me personally, even by Wacom. Most Wacom touch functions I've tested out at stores or in person don't hold a candle to an iPad Pro. So if the smaller screen size and higher price range aren't a deal breaker for you, it's a solid portable option. The plus side is that it's essentially a working computer as well, so you'll be able to use it for much more than just drawing or illustrating or animating. Do beware though that pen displays are going to be what you want if you're just looking for something to hook up to your desktop or laptop as iPads are notoriously tricky to set up as a traditional pen display and I don't recommend it. I suggest checking out some art tech reviewers like Brad Colbo or others if you want to get a more in-depth look at a certain display and so you can get a point of view that's not just my own. One thing I do want to say is that the more that we, smaller independent artists, support companies like XP Pen and Huion, the more competitive the market becomes, which leads to lower overall prices. Part of the reason brands like those have to offer more affordable options than Wacom is because that's one of the ways they can take advantage of a customer base that Wacom has almost all but forgotten about. In the end, it's a positive for us artists, and is also a nice way to give the other companies who are striving to make it easier for artists to get these tools in their hands a chance. I hope this video was at least a little informative, and if you're in the market for a new pen display, I hope my suggestions helped. If you're curious about the differences between the iPad Pro and the XP Pen Artist 22 second generation, check out the video I made going over the pros and cons of each. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.